everyone, welcome back to another Mental Health Mini. Um, as always, uh, we are chatting to someone who is known amongst the Norwich fan base, public figures and such, to speak to them about their uh, history with mental health, uh, what affects them on a day-to-day -day basis and any advice they might be able to give based on their own uh, experiences and their, their own thoughts. Um, obviously, it's very tailored to them, um, but hopefully one person will see them and go, yep, yeah, I resonate with that, or yep, yeah, I can do something about this, I can help myself, or I can help someone, and if we can help one person, we're, we're happy. So um, I'm joined today by Lee Clark. Uh, Lee is uh, known to the majority of us as the Fark Knight. So Lee, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> no, not at all. So uh, a lot of it, obviously a lot of you will have seen Lee across the uh, various photos and videos dressed up as uh, the Fark Knight, bringing joy to us all uh, whenever we've seen him. Um, and you'd also seen him recently. He's spoken out for the first time about his uh, his issues. And uh, just a very quick mention and, and thank you to Tim Krull for um, for offering you those tickets for for doing what you do for the club and the fans. We all love it. So um, we'll, uh, we'll kick off. And Lee, as I always, it, it's over to you. So first of all, tell us about your experiences with mental health. As I say, be as open and as honest as you want to be. It's uh, just a chat for us. So. Okay, I'll, I'll, first of all, I've, I've never done anything like this before. So this is all new to me. Um, I've been married now for a few years. I've been with my wife since 2015. And I've always suffered with it, but I've dealt with it in my own way. And that was always, I always used to shut myself away. So anything, every time, literally, I live day by day. So I always give myself a focus, which helps me. And um, I always have my girls every other weekend. So literally, I'll be focusing on that Friday to when I pick my girls up. I'd have that focus. Then every Sunday when I dropped them home was the hardest part. That's when I'd come home. I'd have family and friends messaging me, but I didn't want to be disturbed. I just wanted to be on my own, shutting myself away. And I'd try and put something on TV to try and put my mind away and think, look, I've got my girls again in two weeks' time, 12 days. I used to count down 12 days, I've got my girls again. And literally, I used to focus on that. Then I'd be focusing on, look, I'm going to take them somewhere. We're going to go somewhere on a day out. And I'd focus on to that day out. But I used to shut everybody away from me. And I used to snap at people. And I, I've never, never realised what I had, what was going on. But it, it's been there for, I don't know for how long. And I, I, I literally, I, at work today, so only at work today, I was at one moment, I was in a good place. I felt all happy and that. And the next moment, I wasn't. I was struggling again. And I was like, no, no, come two o'clock, I finish work, I can get home, be in my happy place. And I, I literally, I just pinpoint, I have to pinpoint something in my head. To get me to get me to that point and once i get to that point it's good then i have to give myself another another focus um when i first met when i first got with my girlfriend now my wife um she knew on a sunday she couldn't she'll try her best to talk to me she was always asking me to open up to her and i said no no i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine i just want to be on my own i just want to be on my own and it was only because of kelly that i've started speaking morely and i speak to her a lot and she has to deal with deal with a lot with me and um, it's her support that makes the difference, to be honest. And she wants to support me. She's been my rock. But you tend to, I, I personally, I don't know if anyone else, but you tend to push them, them people away from you, the ones that want to help you and be, and they're doing the right thing and showing their support. But you, you want it, but you don't. And I, I just don't, I didn't know how to take that. And I, I, I struggled with it, with the help and support because everyone knows me as a happy person and you know I love that and that's how I want to be known because I am a happy person and I all I want to do my aim is all I want to do is bring smiles raise money for charity and make a difference to someone's life that is, is all I want to do and I'm so lucky that I get to do that and since going to Norwich um as a regular fan at first um, I loved I loved that. That was my again my focus, my escapism. That was the escape from the real world. Do you know I'd, I'd leave South End about half seven in the morning, get to Norwich around about half nine ten. I would then go and meet the players as they get on the coach, 
meet my friends, then we'd go to Nando's, have our Nando's, then we'd go to Morrison's, get our sweets for the snack. Then we'd go to the fan zone for the kids to have a little bit of fun. We'd go to the game, watch the game, brilliant atmosphere, you know. Then we'd walk home to the car, up parked up by, um, you know, near Trousford Park. And then we'd listen to Canary Call for the journey home. And that was... That was my escapism. That was my focal focus. That was my ritual. And I loved those days. It was 12 hours of escape from the real world. And then again, you think about the next one. And the bonus would be we'd have a game Tuesday night. In the championship, that happens a lot. In the Premier League, it doesn't happen as much. But that was my focus. And then my girls got me one Christmas. They brought me the um, yellow and green wig. And then the following Christmas, they bought me a green Superman T-shirt. And I thought, I've got to do something here, you know, to show that I appreciate their gifts. And um, I dressed I dressed up as a superhero. And I put in the, um, one of the Facebook groups. I think that goes to, to the game. I think it was against Birmingham in 2019 in January. It was our first home game in January. And I dressed up. And I ran a competition for people to come up with names. And obviously... There was like the Fark Knight, I think Yellow Man, something else. There was three of them. And then I gave a vote. The one with the most vote, I'll go with that name. And the Fark Knight won. And, you know, I was like, because that was mad going to a football match game dressed up. And I was a bit embarrassed, like, but the girls, they loved it, you know. And it, it was funny. And so I was thinking, yeah, I'll just go with it. I've got to go with it now. I felt all anxious inside, but I went with it. And it was amazing, like, the, the support, the fans loved it. Everyone, you know, it was great. It was great walking around the ground. Everyone's looking at me, and I'm getting thumbs up and that. And it was just lovely. The Norwich fans are amazing anyway, to be honest. And it was a great feeling. And a lot of people saw the fun side of it, what I was trying to do. And I mainly, obviously, it helps with my charity fundraising as well. And everyone knows me because of it. And, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. But then come the negative stuff and I was it that's when it started really having a massive impact on me and to the point where obviously I stopped going to football altogether and I think as a lot of people have said as well um when lockdown came I was kind of relieved because much as I love my football the escapism I've created this character now that I enjoyed going to football with but I was constantly worried about what I was going to come home and see written about me online. And it literally, I was not enjoying the football that I once was. And um, I generally wasn't. And when lockdown come, it was nice to know that Norwich had played a game at home and I'm not going to see any abuse written about me, do you know? And, and I, I actually enjoyed lockdown because, for that reason. But then I, there were still things floating about about me. People would share an image every so often and then I'd get that abuse again someone one thing that really hurt me once was someone made you know this the photos you can get of someone you make their lips move yeah. um someone done a video of me as the fark night and it really really upset me and you know I didn't speak to my wife about the weeks I just was she knew I won't there was something wrong with me but I just so embarrassed I was so ashamed and I was so upset that someone could do that and I personally had done nothing to them and I just kept questioning myself people are saying I should expect it because I dress up so I should expect all the abuse I should no. expect all the name calling and I was actually thinking to myself well, maybe I should maybe I should expect all this and I'm dressing up I'm drawing attention to myself so maybe they've got a point and I was thinking surely that can't be right it's it reminds me of, right, and I, I don't mean if I've, if I've upset anyone here, I don't mean to, but you know that phrase when someone says you need a man up? You know, if you get upset about someone, they say man up. Well, no, 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 you don't need, there's no such thing as man up. Because I, I dress up, yeah, I don't mean I should get abused. No. And there was, as a kid, I learned a nursery rhyme. And everyone knows this nursery rhyme, and we all sing it, right, but actually it needs to, I don't, I don't agree with it anymore because of what I've, what I've gone through personally. And you know that saying, it was um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Names do hurt. They play a massive part on me. And I, because of me, and I felt like selfish in a way, because of how I've been feeling, my girls haven't been going to football either. 
because I can't bear to go. My girls are missing out on their little ritual. They enjoyed the match day. They enjoyed meeting the players. They enjoyed having their Nando's, getting their sweets. And they've missed out on all of those things because of how some, the minority, only the minority have constantly attacked me because I've dressed up. Now, I dress up as Safark Knight and, you know, 99.9% is amazing. And it, it's helped me raise even more money. I raise money for the CSF, the Norwich City's charity. I use it up in South Bend, spreading the word about the Fark Night. I mean, in the local papers, I get the Fark Night in there. I get my team in there and I get the CF, CF them in there because as well as raising the money, it's about spreading awareness. It's just as important. And I love that I've got two networks that I can use. I use my Norwich network and I use my network here and, and I'm spreading awareness. And like I said, the Fark Night has done amazing things for me on social media with my fundraising, bringing smiles to people's faces. Today, David, um, someone tweeted me, and, you know, I was, like I said earlier, I was in a bad, I was, I was struggling to that work, yeah. I have loads of thoughts going in my head, and my head hurts, because I, I try and write it down to get them out of my head, but sometimes they just won't come out of my head. So today I was struggling, but then I got a tweet, and I looked at this tweet, yeah, and it, I, I can't remember his name now, but it was a man, yeah, he's just been sent a birthday card, and it was a picture of me as the Fark Knight and him on the front from his daughter. And it, and I just like, it brought a massive smile to my face. And I was like, it made me feel good inside again. Do you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. people don't realise, yeah, little things like that make a huge difference. Even if you say to someone, hello, how are you feeling today? It might not seem much to you, but that to that person, you don't know how they're feeling. And all I'm going to say is today I felt really crappy to that work. And that little um, tweet, he didn't have to send me a tweet, tweet to say that, but it, I was just like, I literally had a smile on my face and I had a tear in my eye because it made me feel so good again to realise the love and support there is out there. And that was so nice. And that's why I try now and make that effort to other people because, like, I mean, some people don't like talking about it. I've got friends and I just, you sort of sense that they they want you to talk to them. You sense it, I sense it. And I always make an effort to ask somebody, how are you feeling? How's your day? Are you having a good day? Just to anything, just a little, you don't realise, and that can make the massive difference to someone's life. It really, really can. And that's speaking from my own experience when someone asks me. But at the same time, sometimes I'm thinking to myself, am I showing something? I just, it's, it's, it's tough, but I'm glad more and more people are talking up about it. I love hearing people's stories. Like, like I said, like just with you, Dave, just then, um, I was listening to a, one of my friends who runs a charity football team, what he, his experiences when he went, what he was going through. And it's nice that he can feel, and yourself, and people can feel, you can talk about it. It really does help. It really makes a huge difference. And I'm going to say another thing. Um, a few months ago, I was in a bad place, a real bad place. But to everyone else, because we're good at this, Dave, aren't we? We are good yeah. at keeping a, oh, a, yes. a fake face on, I call it. Yeah. Right, so we're really good at that, yeah. And um, I, I, I went on behind closed doors. I let it all out. I'm struggling. I struggle. But to the outside world and that, and everyone, I try and put on my fake face. But it was a point where I was really low. And I went out. And I don't normally go out. I just went. I normally take my dog with me for a walk. And I just went, I didn't know what I was going to do. I just went, I went for a walk. Didn't say bye to my wife or anything. I just went, I just had to get out of the house. I had to go. I didn't know what I was doing. I was in, I was in a, my lowest, one of my lowest points, I'd say. And I was just walking down this, I was walking down the beach. And I remember just walking down the beach. I think, what am I going to do? What am I doing? Um, my phone rang and it was my wife ringing me. I didn't answer it. I didn't want to speak to her. So I carried on walking. I didn't know what I was doing. I was out just walking along the beach, feeling sorry for myself. I was. I was, I was really upset. I don't know why. My head is like pounding. I've got loads going on in my mind. And I couldn't get rid of it. And my phone rang again. And it was my wife. She called me again. I didn't answer it. And then she t sent me a text message. And do you know what? She was so worried about me. She sent me this text message, right? And I thought, I, I texted her back. And I said, look, I'm fine, babe. I'm just having a walk to clear my head. And again, what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to say is, some people don't realise those little things make a huge difference. 
and that little text message from my wife because I wouldn't answer her phone made the difference to me because I, I was in my mind I wasn't going to talk to anybody but because she sent me that text message I read the message and then it made me stop and think and I texted her back and said look I'll be home soon but I'm just clearing my head that's all and she was like you didn't take the dog Lee I'm really worried about you, you didn't answer my phone and that and I reassured her because obviously she's been worried about me but again it's those little those little messages or that little say how are you doing how are you feeling today make a huge huge difference and I've just given a couple of examples what what's helped me and I would never believe those sort of things would help me when you're when you're at your lowest you can't you don't see anything else but if you can stop for that second stop for that moment it means it means so much to you and then you realize how much you have got and like again I how lucky I am like I've got my girls I've got my, my beautiful wife who, who's there like she sees the bad side of me or my my rock my support like um she's defended me many a times like on social media because um her daughter Emily she's um 12 years old she had leukemia when she was like two or three and um Kelly had to plan for a funeral so like obviously thankfully Emily survived you know is here to tell her and she's grown up to be a smart clever little girl which is amazing and like um I didn't ask Kelly to do anything I don't ask her to do anything like that but she done a post about why fundraising is important from certain different people because if it wasn't for the fundraisers at Great Ormond Street you know Emily might not be in here now and it, it that is very very important and that's the one thing that I struggle with baby I dress up for humor at football everyone's welcome at football regardless you know what you wear or how you look your race your religion everyone's welcome right i couldn't work out me dressing up and me fundraising while i was getting all that abuse and i still don't understand it now i will never understand that i really can't get my head around it i'd understand if i've done something wrong but all I'm doing is dressing up for comedy, for bringing colour in the river end, bringing smiles to many supporters' faces. And the supporters, again, with that tweet, what Team Crawl done, with many supporters private messaging me, Emmy messaged me, Jake Humphreys messaged me. It re Again, it's, a, it's that thing what I keep saying. Hello, how you doing? How you feeling today? Those things make you realise, no matter how, sometimes when I'm in that bad place, all I can think of is tunnel vision. You know, enough, you, you, you know the thoughts I was getting. And, but then you realise as well, when you come out of that tunnel vision, if you can just snap out for that second, if someone speaks to you at the right point, or you get that message at the right moment, and you re then you get realised, actually, yes, I am loved. I am not useless. I'm not a wimp. I'm not crap. I'm not a waste of space. I'm, I, I, I'm not a bad dad. I'm not a bad husband. I'm not a bad son. I'm not a failure. I can do this. And it's that moment, that moment in time when you get that message, that how you feeling, or that call, or that love you get shown, it makes you realise, you think, to me, my, proud, my proudest moment is obviously my girls. My proudest moment is my wife. And my proudest moment is my fundraising in Norwich. Those four things mean the world to me and I live for them and myself because the fundraising is that I look at school I wasn't I didn't learn I was I was the um joker at school you know I like to make again make people smile laugh and all yes. that <laughs> I found everyone finds something they're really they're, they're, they're good at I believe in like you find something you're good at and my thing I'm good at is the fundraising I'm, I'm good at being a dad I'm good at being a husband I'm not so good at opening up but because of what's happened lately, I've opened up more than I would dream of. And I mean, I'm literally speaking to you now and people are going to watch this and no way would I do that. I wouldn't, I've never even, how I'm speaking now, I've never even done this to my best friend. My best, I've never spoke like this to my best mate. And that's, I'm close to him. He like, he lives with us as well, my best mate. He's like a brother. He's like family. And I tell him everything. But me speaking to you, is it's quite easy because obviously I'm on a camera, so it's different. Whereas you know you face to face, I don't know if you find that, David. I, I find I, it easier. 
You do, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I find brilliant, it much easier brilliant. doing this with you than I would talking to most people in uh, that I know. And my friends will say the same. Um, I want to pick on, and this, this kind of leads me to a point I want to pick up on that you said, and, and there's two kind of things that you do that I think are very good and that we encourage people to do. It's find a focus. And for you, it's your family, it's your wife, it's your kids. And number two is... Um, Sorry, I've lost my train. I thought you've uh, just thinking about it. Um, it's right. surround yourself with people who know you. Now, you said something that really made me kind of sit up and listen to you. And it's the, uh, and I, I have the same in my life. You went out without the dog and your wife texted you saying, you've done something different. There's something wrong. It's getting people that know you enough that if there is something wrong, they can spot it. And it's having those people and then you yourself having, pe having people or things. I hope it's people. People are the most wonderful thing in the world. But if it's not and it's going to the football or it's work or it's a hobby, find that thing that's going to either distract you or cheer you up. Yeah, and hey, can I... You know, so let me another little story I've got for you, right? Um, fundraising, yeah. So when I my fundraising is one of my focuses. It really is, right? Because um, literally at an end of a fundraiser, I go down right downhill, deflated. I I go into depressive. I get depressed, and like, I just shut myself away again. But then, if you notice with me, right? Per what I do now, I have about so I've got so many fundraisers on the go, yeah. So at the moment at work, I'm doing a com currently doing a sponsored three months silent okay so i'm not allowed to talk at work for three months it's the worst one because i like talking and obviously when you can't talk you have more thoughts on your head do you know what i mean then that's what's so hard so but i do that because i'm doing it for charity and i'm going to help some charities i don't mind suffering to help someone else why i can suffer to help someone is just the best feeling in the world but at the same point that ends in april right but I've already got a charity of fundraiser already ongoing from that, which is the Coastal Challenge, which I'm doing for the CSF. And that's in June. I also got um, a football team that I run called the Fark Night Rises. And we play one charity game a month, um, 11 aside football. And we also play seven aside football on a Sunday in a league, which that money goes to charity. So I've constantly got my charity to focus on. Now, a few years ago, my, my wife was pregnant and... Um, we um she had to um give birth to the baby but the baby was not well and i can't remember what it was but basically the head wasn't forming so the baby wouldn't have lived if um, my wife went through the full pregnancy so we had to make the decision and when when she was in labor to give birth because of how i was feeling and i struggled with things i set up a fundraiser that was for my next charity because that helped me focus, knowing when I'm going to be helping, I'm going to be raising money, I'm going to do something here. And I set up another fundraiser because, again, I need a focus. And those things, like coming home, knowing that when I finish work at two o'clock, my wife goes down about half past three because she works at the school, I'm going to see my wife. Knowing on the Friday, my girls are coming because it's my weekend with the girls. On the Sunday, I've got my charity football. Do you know what I mean? And, and they'll... I've constantly, my fundraising, I've got to say, has helped me so much because when you, when I have had thoughts in my head and I have had them, right, I think to myself, if I do something, I'm not going to raise that money. I'm not going to complete that challenge and be able to help that charity. And that's the first time I've said anything like this. Okay. So I've just, that's me being Debbie honest, but I feel that I need to finish that challenge to raise that money to help that charity. And I know and it makes me feel good inside knowing I'm, I'm able to help someone so I can. And then I think kids at the weekend, football Sunday. And because of like all the abuse I got with Norwich, I went to the Watford game at home because I was, I was invited by um, Emma and me, so my wife never sat in a box. So I already given my tickets away for that game. I just, I, I decided I weren't going to go again. 
And um, so Emma said, like, she invited us and we went and it was lovely. You know, my wife's never been in a box at football, so it was a nice experience for her. And, you know, I, de- I enjoyed it. It was a nice experience, but I didn't want to be there. But, you know, I, I enjoyed it. And then I went to the game after that and that was against Brighton. And that was because um, Tim Krull was, um, he gave me his shirt after the game which I auctioned off for charity. Me and my daughter's done a, we slept on the streets for 24 hours for charity. So that helped towards the fundraising of that. And then after the Brian game, that was my mind made up. I, I weren't going back. And it was only a couple of weeks ago, I decided that I weren't going to go back to August. I thought I'll try and go back in August, see how I feel. Because every time I gave myself a date, because I always try and give myself a focus. So I, I originally said, I'm going to go back. I think it was, must have been November. I think the Man United game was the game I was aiming to go back for. Okay, then when I got to like two weeks closer to the Man United game, oh, my anxiety was all over the place. I was getting chest pains. I was feeling sick. I was feeling ill with worry. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. And I kept saying to myself, it's like you have a conversation with yourself, David. I don't know if you do that. I just have a conversation with myself and I, I couldn't get out of it. In the end, I said, look, look, you're not going. And then I felt a bit better. And I felt, yes, I haven't got to go. I'm not going to football. Because I didn't want to go to see the abuse. And some of the abuse was so unwarranted. Well, all of it was unwarranted. None of it's warranted. To make me question to make me question it was just awful, mate. And I just you know, I worried about my girls because like obviously they're they're getting on social media. Right. My eldest is on social media. And my youngest wants to go on it, but I'm keeping her away from it in a sense. But they would see some of those things written about their dad. Do you know what I mean? And, and there was going to be upsetting. written about it, it is. And there was a thing where I shared a picture of me dressed as the Fark Knight and my girls dressed as little Fark Knights. Someone, someone screenshot that image, right, and used it in one of their groups to aim hate us. Why? And that really hurt me because. They've done nothing. They're proud of their dad. Do you know what I mean? Dressing up. And they've done it as well. I don't think they do it now, to be honest. Now, <laughs> but <laughs> they were proud. And I was a proud, I was a proud dad that they they done it. And I love that. And do you know what I mean? And do you know, Isabel used to say to me, like, Dad, um, I, I love that, you know, everyone wants to have a picture of you. They're so nice. They like you. I was like, yeah, it's because I'm being crazy, isn't it, Isabel? They, they just got, like, they're supporting us and they support our fundraising. And it is, I mean, the Fark Night, I, I want, like, I always get asked. And that's one, uh, one of the hardest things. When Daniel Farker got sacked, yeah, a lot of people were saying, I need to, like, first of all, there was abusive ones. Oh, f- f- like, thank God he'll, he'll go now. We won't have that clown at Carrow Road embarrassing us all. And I got there, I saw loads of things written about that. And I thought, to myself, what Daniel Fark done for Norwich is amazing anyway, but I'm, I'm the Fark Knight. I'm, the character name's been created. I'm a superhero, regardless of what manager we have, because managers are going to come and go. It is the way of football, isn't it? And I want to, and people were saying to me, don't go, don't go to football dressed up anymore. If you're feeling how you feel, why are you going dressed up? And that's not what I wanted to hear. Do you know what I mean? I didn't want to hear that. If I wanted to do that, I'd do it. Do you know what I mean? I don't need someone telling me not to dress up. I would do that if that's what I wanted to do. But I generally do enjoy playing the Fark Knight because as you see in all the Twitter posts and messages that I've had come through, people that can't get to the game watch it on TV and they say they play they play games with their children trying to spot the Fark Knight in the crowd. And they say they're watching out for me and they're trying to spot me out. And that brings a smile to my face. And like, People know where I sit and they go, when we get there, we always look out for you. And it's we, it's not been the same not seeing you there, waving your scarf. And I those, do. those are the things. And that, that's what I mean. That's, that's what the Fark Knight, it doesn't, it means a lot more to everyone else as well. And if I can bring that smile, because that smile I might bring to, David, might be having a bad day. Yeah. That smile that I bring to someone might be going through what we've been through and actually see me and think, I, I, I've seen like I, I remember. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you don't. The, there's games I've seen you at um, when I've watched them on TV or I've watched the highlights, and I've seen you brought up by uh, I don't know Rob Butler or I, I, I've seen you on other image like on Norwich Image, and it genuinely made me smile when 
I'm probably not having the best day. I mean, I can't exactly give you an example, but I'm, I have yeah. my bad days every so often. But for me personally, and I know not everyone feels the same and everyone's entitled to their opinion. But for me, seeing you used to put a smile on my face because I thought you were great. I thought it was a great character uh, and, and the colour was fantastic. So it, for me, it was wonderful. Um, and David, that means the world to me, mate. And I've done something right there. And that's, that is, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. And that's why I do the Fark Night. So I've always said I want to keep these short to keep engagement. Um, Lee, I want to have another chat with you again in the future. But 100%, for now, mate. For now, to finish off, anyone watching this who's either going through something that you might be going through or knows someone and he's, he's watching it happen to someone else, have you got any advice for them? Yeah, look, key words, man, to be honest, like my experience is, my wife noticed an unusual behaviour from me that time when I went out for the walk and I ignored her phone calls. So I wasn't in the frame of mind for talking. I wasn't going to answer her phone. So she messaged me and that message changed my perception, what, what, what was going on in my head. That message made a hell of a difference to me and made me think about all the other positive stuff in life. And that gave me that focus and just just be there if you if you if you're worrying you know try and try and get them to open up it's hard because it is hard to speak to be honest even if you go away and message them or do it on facebook or text it's much easier to i find personally i find it easier talking to david now on this camera than if they were sitting next to me would i be telling them my story those stories i just done i don't think i would because i'd be to be honest i couldn't do it but this is easier because if I don't feel comfortable about something now, I could literally just hang up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how easy it is. So, yeah, a drop a text message makes, honestly, it can make a real big difference. That is my advice to you. And um, if I, if you want to talk to me or reach out to me, please do. I'm on Facebook at Lee, Clark, Lee Fart Night Clark. I'm on Twitter, KD Clark Lee. I'm happy, I'm happy to drop advice, talk to you, or, you know, we could talk to each other about our problems. I'm... I'm happy to help in any way I can. If you want me as Lee or the fuck tonight, <laughs> I'm there. Well, that's great tonight. And Lee, this for me, this has been a really powerful one listening to you open up. I'm really, really grateful that you've done this for us today. Um, for myself, uh, the trust and the mental health side. And for anyone watching, I mean, as I say, if one person sees you and seeks help, then we've done something right. So as I say, finally, thank you so much for doing this for us. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. I've really enjoyed it. Actually, you've helped me today just talking to me, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Cool. Um, for anyone watching, obviously, Lee said it. Uh, same goes for us. If you want to reach out to us, we're on Twitter, Canaries Trust MH. Please get in contact with us. We're going to be on Instagram soon. Um, I'm happy to help uh, point you in the right direction of anyone we know. Uh, we'll do everything we can to help. Um, and we just we, that's all we want to do is just make sure people are okay. Um, there'll be a link uh, with this and a clip um, following for Lee's charity. Uh, please uh, donate if you can. It's an absolutely amazing cause and he's doing something really strong for it. So as I say, take care, everyone, and we'll see you for the next one. Bye.